Hello, I'm Dr. Harper. This, this video is in Homework Excel Tutorial Part F in Operations Management Business Forecasting. So let's bring up the problem. At the end of their fiscal year, a consulting company wants a quarterly forecast for the number of contracts next year. In their forecasting analysis, they examine quarterly number of contracts over the past three years. And here's our data. If you were working for my consulting company, what would I accept as the best quarterly forecast of each quarter of year four? Now, what I mean by this, if you were working for my consulting company, is I know what you know, and there's a problem-solving process, I would expect you to go through it. Notice there's nothing in here that says what you're supposed to do. But you should first plot it, determine stationarity, determine components, estimate your parameters, select a technique, estimate your parameters, get your forecast. So let's take the data. Let's take this, control C, open up Excel. So here we have the data. There it is. And so the first thing you really do with the data is you plot it. Well, let's take this and that's going to be our data. Come down here and plot it again down here. Uh, there it is. Uh, and so let's, uh, we have our year and quarter. Let's bring our contracts down here and let's have just time. One equals one plus, oops, one plus this. And this is going to be how many? 12 quarters. So we take this right here. We go insert, plot, and there it is. So the first thing is a line plot. Okay? And so you say, here's our, here's our time series, and there's our line plot. Fine. Okay, the next thing we want to do, let's uh, reduce this down. Okay. Uh, the next thing we, we want to do is, uh, is a stacked, stacked plot. And so therefore, we take this data again, bring it back, bring it back down here again. There it is. Now it's quarterly data, so now we want a stack plot. Okay, so we only have two more years, so we'll just bring this down here, and then bring this down here. So this is going to be year one, year two, year two, and year three. And this up here is quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And there we go. And we don't really need the years anymore. And we don't need quarters anymore. And we can take away the formatting, the boxing. Okay. Now we want to plot this. Okay. And this is our time series. So let's plot this, take out the bold, uh, center it, come back to Arial. Okay, now we come to our insert, our data here, and we plot it. And now we have a nice plot here. And from this plot, we can tell we have two plots now. The first plot we can tell, we have a linear trend. We can see the trend right there. As a matter of fact, you could actually click this, double click it, and uh, or right click it I mean and over here you can say add trend line and you can have a linear trend line so you can have different trend lines if you want okay over here we have uh, we can have uh, different types of trend lines okay and we have uh, a linear trend here and if you right, right click this and you can format the trend line uh, you can have exponential linear, logarithmic, uh, and down here you can have display the equation on the chart. There's a regression equation. Or, or display the R squared value, or both. <laughs> or, or both. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep that in there. That's convenient. Okay. So this is one plot in, in our investigative study. Now the stack plot illustrates, oh, we do have 
uh, a pattern repeating every year because four quarters is a year. So we know we have a trend component here and we know we have a seasonal component. And that's why it's blocked. And so now we want to do a seasonal analysis. Okay, so here's our year. Oh, I need to take out, it's not 12, it's one. Here's three. That's better. Okay, so now as we do, if we've done before, this is one, two, three. Let's get our slope. Now I say slope because that's the function we use. Okay, and it's actually a trend. So we take our data, comma, our time independent variable, F4 to freeze it. And then let's copy this over. We see it. And here we take our average. Take our average of the seasonal trend, and we have our seasonally adjusted trend of 600. Okay, and then we can have our seasonal indexes here. Equals our seasonal trend, divided by our, our seasonally adjusted trend, F4 to, to fix it. And then there's our seasonal indexes right there, 0 0.95, 1.2, 1.4. We can see it goes down, then it goes up. Okay, and then we can have our forecast. That will equal an intercept, again, of our data, comma, our time, fix it, which is a function of time, uh, plus our slope, which is here, uh, times our year. In this case, our year is four. And we, there's our forecast for next year. And we can certainly plot those. OK. Uh, and so down here, we can have our seasonally adjusted time series if we wish and uh, I think I do want to do that uh, to have a complete set of information we don't need the data we're going to generate our own data here and this is a seasonally adjusted time series Okay, and uh, so a seasonal justice simply would be our uh, seasonal data divided by our index in F4. Same here, seasonal index, I mean seasonal value divided by our seasonal index, F4. Here's our seasonal value, seasonal index F4, equal our seasonal value, seasonal index F4, and then we will reduce this, copy this down. And we see here we have a step function. We've seen this before. The slope here will be our data, comma, our time period, F4, and then copy that over. OK, and there's the uh, slope uh, of our seasonally adjusted quarterly time series, the annual slope. And so now we can take our, get a forecast. Intercept of our data, comma, our time, F4, plus our slope, which is right there, times our year, which is year four. And there's our seasonally adjusted which will be nice in the level of 3,100. So we know we can plan for 3,100. Uh, and so the annual for next year is going to be somewhere around 12,400. And this annual, because we have uh, 12,400. So these are the seasonal values, the seasonally adjusted value. These are going to be the same because we have a uh, a step function. We have a nice step function here. So you're just uh, multiplying the same number, 3100, this very same number by your uh, indexes. Okay, and so uh, from this, our forecast for next year is going to be these four right here. If we bring these down, we see our forecast. Bring these up, bring this down, bring this up. Bring this up, 2790, 1550, 3720, 4340. So even though we have the forecast, that's exactly what we want. But 
A lot of times we'll know we'll want to know the seasonally adjusted values, uh, what are the indexes, uh, what's the seasonally adjusted time series, on and on and on. Okay, so that's all I have. That's all I have for the part F for the homework Excel tutorial. I hope this helps. Take care.